Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at congenital adrenal hyperplasia and the associated conditions. For better understanding, we will learn this topic by solving questions. I teach medical concepts, create quizzes, host interviews with doctors, and share my med journey. So if you're a medical student, do subscribe to my channel. The adrenal gland is present on top of the kidneys. It has a cortex and a medulla. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia involves the cortex, so let's take a look at it in detail. This is the outermost layer and this is the innermost. This is zona glomerulosa, this is zona fasciculata and this is zona reticularis. Glomerulosa mainly produces aldosterone, fasciculata makes cortisone and reticularis produces testosterone. There are many enzymes involved in producing these which we will be getting to in a while. Question number one. A woman with Sheehan syndrome is likely to have Option A. Normal aldosterone, normal cortisol levels Option B. Low aldosterone, low cortisol levels Option C. Normal aldosterone, low cortisol levels Option D. Low aldosterone, normal cortisol levels The answer to this question is normal aldosterone and decreased cortisol. When a woman gets pregnant, the pituitary increases in size. During delivery, in case there is a lot of blood loss, the pituitary will undergo infarction. So, the pituitary will not be able to produce hormones. ACTH is one of them. Since there will be low ACTH levels, there will be low cortisol. Aldosterone levels will not be affected by a change in ACTH because the secretion of aldosterone is mainly controlled by renin and angiotensin 2. Question number 2. 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency will lead to dash blood pressure. Option A high, option B low. The answer to this question is high. 17-alpha hydroxylase is unique because it is involved in the conversion of substances from one zone to another. I'm going to be marking its functions in brown. If there is a deficiency in 17-alpha hydroxylase, these conversions will not take place. So, ultimately, pregnenolone and progesterone will back up. Since the reaction can't go this way, it will be shunted in this direction. This results in excessive production of aldosterone. Increase in aldosterone levels increases the blood pressure. Question number 3. Renin levels in patients with 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency is likely to be high or low? The answer to this question is low. 11-beta-hydroxylase is involved in these two reactions. It converts 11-deoxycorticosterone to corticosterone and converts 11-deoxycortisol to cortisol. If this enzyme is deficient, the production of these products and hence aldosterone will be inhibited. And the levels of 11-deoxycorticosterone and 11-deoxycortisol will be high. Although aldosterone is low, the blood pressure in these patients will be high because 11-deoxycorticosterone has properties similar to aldosterone. So, the increased 11-deoxycorticosterone levels in these patients will result in an increase in blood pressure. Whenever the blood pressure is low, renin is released to trigger aldosterone to increase the blood pressure. But now, since 11-deoxycorticosterone has already increased the blood pressure, the levels of renin will be low. Question number 4. Hyperkalemia is seen in all of the following except Option A. 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency Option B. Glyceretinic acid consumption Option C. 21-hydroxylase deficiency Option D. 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency the answer to this question is 21-hydroxylase deficiency. 21-hydroxylase converts progesterone to 11-deoxycorticosterone and converts 17-hydroxyprogesterone to 11-deoxycortisol. 
If this is deficient, we will not be able to produce aldosterone and cortisone. Low aldosterone leads to low blood pressure. 11 deoxycorticosterone levels are low as well. So overall, there is a decrease in mineralocorticoid function. Mineralocorticoids decrease the amount of potassium and increase the blood pressure. So their deficiency will lead to hypokalemia. 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency will cause hypokalemia as it involves excessive aldosterone production. Similarly, 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency will also lead to an increase in mineralocorticoid activity and hence lead to hypokalemia. Glycerinic acid consumption prevents the conversion of cortisol to cortisone. Cortisol has the ability to work like aldosterone as well, so that can also cause hypokalemia. Question number 5. Virilization is not seen in Option A. 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency Option B. 21 hydroxylase deficiency Option C. 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency Option D. All of them are characterized by virilization. The answer to this question is 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. Virilization involves the development of male physical features like deep voice, excessive body hair, etc. This happens when the zona reticularis is hyperactivated. This is seen in both 21 hydroxylase deficiency and 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency because in these two conditions, these reactions will not take place. So, progesterone and 17-hydroxyprogesterone will back up. Since they can't move this way, the reaction will get shunted towards zona reticularis. Increased activation of this zone results in increased testosterone and hence virilization. 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency will not have virilization because there will be very little testosterone production. So the takeaway from this lecture is aldosterone increases the blood pressure and decreases potassium. 11-deoxycorticosterone and cortisol have mineralocorticoid properties like aldosterone so they can increase the blood pressure and decrease potassium as well. 17-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency will lead to an increase in blood pressure without virilization. 11-beta-hydroxylase deficiency increases the blood pressure along with virilization. 21-hydroxylase deficiency decreases blood pressure and causes virilization. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment below and share it. It will really encourage me to make more videos like this. Thank you for watching.